Let's do a little galaxy exploring. Welcome to SETI Astro. It's a long time resisting taking a lot of luminance on targets, specifically with my refractor because uh, everything was so bloated that it, it just wasn't any good. But now with the newt, I could absolutely take luminance. So I decided to go for a little, little experiment here, just a, a deep image of uh, a double cluster of galaxies. So let's dive into it. Now, since it was galaxies off in the distance, I wasn't too concerned about going deep on RGB as the real color would lie in the, the stars themselves. So I only took 40 each of red, green, and blue. Each one was uh, three minute exposures. Luminance, on the other hand, I went and got well over 600 one minute exposures of which uh, 607 were uh, useful during the stack. And I was not disappointed with uh, the, the, the LUM channel here. It, I mean, STF stretches it pretty far, but right off the bat without any uh, noise reduction or anything, you could see this ring around this galaxy up here, which I found interesting right off the bat. There's these very faint other structures in here. And then just down below this other really bright elliptical galaxy, there's all these other faint fuzzes. I, I was really excited about this. The, the galaxy here has some, some tidal warping from its interactions with other galaxies and a very interesting structure on, on this galaxy over here. So I, I think my trepidation about taking luminance is well in the past now and for rgb exposures i am definitely going to be taking uh, a lot of luminance to to really enhance it now removing the noise and stars actually removing the stars removed a lot of galaxies in there too little tiny ones but you could start seeing some really cool stuff right off the bat just in the luminance all these little all these little galaxies. So let's go ahead and, and step through really quick and then we'll dig into some of the some of the more exciting bits. So now after stretching and removing some blemishes, there is a lot of, I don't even know what it is, interstellar flux out there or or, or something else in the in the luminance for sure that has structure more broadly across the image. And you could kind of see it as as modeling. There's a big stream of it right here in the in the middle too. So it was a matter of taste whether I tried to include all this stuff or try to tap it down as well as it may just kind of look like noise in, in the final image. On the RGB, uh, removing the stars, removing the noise, I did do a color calibration on it. So the uh, the galaxy colors should be really close to being accurate here. They are all uh, a little redder. They are out there pretty far. And then from this point is where I added in the, the luminance. So putting the luminance back in, brought all the detail in and kept some of that, uh, kept some of the color. I, I knew it wouldn't keep a, a bunch of it, but we could, we could enhance that going further too. Again, some of these cool galaxies up here like this one with the, the ring around it and stuff. Some further tweaks to, to finish off the, the full RGB image here. During the uh, RGB star extraction, you could see that there were a number of like galaxies also removed with the stars uh, just because Star X thought they were stars, right? Uh, on the luminance though, they weren't there. So since we had already combined the luminance with the RGB, I didn't want to double add the galaxies back in. So I did have to merge the luminance stars with the, with the RGB stars. Doing that luminance and RGB star combination did leave me some pretty nice uh, stars. I was able to bring down the, the halos, bring that luminance in a little bit. It kept the crispness on some of these diffraction spikes looking really good. Now combining it all together, we have our LRGB full image here. And, and this is really where the exploring can start happening. So we have some really interesting looking galaxies here. A big elliptical, two nice spirals. This one ha is a barred spiral. It has the nice bar in the center and then these spiral arms. There's also two big tidal tails coming off. There's the very interesting one up here with this ring around it. Kind of reminds me of that Hoag's object. Uh, not nearly as popular, I would say. This, this is just such an interesting object here with this structure in the center 
in this big ring. We'll, lo we'll look at this one here in a little bit more detail. So that object with the ring around it is NGC 483. And here in Simbad, you almost can't you almost can't see a ring around it at all. Going into the CDS portal, again, DSS doesn't show much of anything, but we can we can look at a different one. Let's go to the SDSS. And and, and that kind of has a ring around it there. In the NED search, the ring has some infrared objects that Wise looked at, uh, but again, it, it's not very apparent either. It wasn't until I got to the IRSA finder chart that now SDSS does show, you can see here they have the negatives of that, that ring around that galaxy. Still just faintly though. So I, I, I think right off the bat, my particular image here has that more well-defined than some of these other sky surveys, which I think is really cool. And if you really stretch just the luminance, you could really see that, that ring structure around that galaxy there. Another galaxy that caught my eye was this, this little one here. And it, it, it's shape and it's like this bright core and the, you know, this loopy structure or this butterfly looking structure. In this galaxy goes under a lot of different names, PGC, 5002, you got the CGCG 502055, this giant two mass number. Uh, anyways, I'm on the, the CDS portal again and zoomed way in. And yeah, sure enough, this is another one of these galaxies that may have this, this weird ring and this, this center structure here. So definitely an, another very interesting interacting galaxy here. Another thing I did in what's in my image is pulled up all the quasars that were visible. And using that, I was able to get the redshifts to all of them, right? And in an annotated image with it, by far the one with the highest redshift is, is this little guy here. It had a redshift of almost three and a half. It, it puts it at over 22 and a half billion light years away. And the universe was, was just 2 billion years old when, when that object formed or when that light first left. So it is a very distant object, by far the, the highest redshift I've seen on a quasar. And in my annotated version, I did list redshifts of every quasar that had a redshift listed. So if you're going through and, and looking at the annotated version, I, I do have all the redshifts and distances listed there. I know this is called a, a double cluster of galaxies and it's really referring to NGC 507 group and the NGC 499 group up over here, but there's a, there's a completely other set of grouping of galaxies. Uh, there's the DES catalog galaxies over here and all these little faint fuzzes are, are galaxies. And on the other side of the image is a whole nother cluster of them. So within my double cluster galaxy image, there's a whole nother set of double clusters. And then what I found really intriguing is this cluster of galaxies uh, below NGC 507 or just to the east of it that I just had a hard time finding any information on any of these points of light. Uh, you can look in the, the NED survey and there's some catalog listings for infrared sources. So the, the WISE telescope did a part of its infrared survey has them cataloged but as for the the types of galaxies you know looking in the optical there there's nothing for this whole group of galaxies here which which i find really cool too so you know there's billions maybe trillions of stars out there and these little points of fuzz that that aren't really cataloged and you can see it it's it's a big group right it it spans this this whole area here and it's so far away that you know that that there's there's dozens and dozens of galaxies involved in, in that group too where i was really expecting a similar one to like the the des catalog here would have had a, a big batch of them there and it, and it just doesn't so just really loving exploring some of these 
images now with what's in my image and, and really digging in. Like we have some unusual galaxies. Now knowing that what I'm sure the rest of you have already known, taking a lot of luminance really can add a lot of depth and detail to your images. So I, I and absolutely uh, started imaging a, another galaxy chain uh, where I want to go very deep on. This, this particular image, you know, I only had 16 hours of exposure. When I do narrow band, I easily get up 32, 48 hours of exposure on, on a target. And I want to do that on one of these galaxy chains. Uh, so the next one I'm going to do, I'm, I'm going to go really, really long on it. Push, you know, 32 hours or more uh, just, just to see what I can get out of it. I've updated Asherbin with my double galaxy cluster of NGC 507. I have the uh, normal image and then my fully annotated image, complete with all the quasars and distances and all those other objects I was able to find with what's in my image. And overlaid on top of that is the standard render annotate image out of PixInsight as well. I have all my acquisition details, a little write up, and then some really kind of close in ones of these very peculiar ones and some of the other sites that that kind of show that you know it's it's kind of at the the cutting edge of imaging some of these objects right now because there's not a whole lot of images out there of them we got the cluster here that doesn't have any name to it the the interesting butterfly of pgc 5002 just some close in groups of some of the grouping and then these dead Des catalog galaxy clusters. There's also another one in the upper right that it reminds me so much of the shrimp nebula that I just imaged. And it's just this weird comma of a galaxy. So if you're looking at the full image, it's, it's up over here in the upper right. That little comma of a galaxy. And on the annotated version, we have the name for it. It's just such an intriguing little structure to it. I've also updated my website, setiastro.com, under galaxies. For the double cluster, I have mouse over zoomable images. You can click the image and get the full resolution. I also have two collages, one of all the quasars and one of all the galaxies themselves. And then the annotated version as well. Well, I hope everybody's having some clear skies out there. Let's keep exploring the cosmos. Please comment, like, and subscribe.